hydrant and the San Miguel School District is beyond our grasp. We do not inspect and do have any fire authority on a public school. Mm -hmm. We could assist them with their emergency ev evacuation plan, which mm -hmm. we are doing, but it's up to them to maintain, inspect, and test their own facilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then also, does that also apply to also private residences where they have to inspect and test their own? They would have to provide a certified inspector to come out and, and test the flow of their hydrant. We can merely go out and give it a, give it a visual test. We could test the residual or the static pressure, mm -hmm. but that's about as much as we will do. And once we start operating the hydrant, it's a private hydrant, and if we damage it, we own it. And we are not going to go through the burden of repairing defective hydrants on private property. It's their burden to make sure that their systems are maintained properly. Mm -hmm. Is it similar to the regs that regard to uh, sprinkler systems and buildings? Like those have to be tested periodically? Sprinkler systems and buildings, they, they have to have a five-year hydro and annual visual inspection on them. And it's up to the, <coughs> the owner of the property or the tenant to provide a on-site individual to operate the system. We are merely there to visually inspect, not to perform any tests. Okay. Then we assume liability. Hydros are pretty much the same though. They require a five-year flow to be certified if they're providing uh, protection for a specific area privately. Okay. So they would have to get a private company to do that, um, and then an annual inspection to check Visual. all the other. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to make sure that that's more like written that they that these people need to get an inspection. Uh, I, I I didn't see it written in here that they have to get. It's an inspection. not our jurisdiction. That so because the thing is is that if people I assume they're not going to be thinking about testing their fire hydrant. It's then not it, our jurisdiction. I hate to be argumentative with I, you, but it's it's not in our wheelhouse. It is up to the individual property owner, and the individual property owner will normally have a property manager. The property manager will have an insurance company they deal with, and that would be the person driving the inspections. If they would like to have us come out and visually inspect their hydrant, they would have to formally request us mm -hmm. to come out and do so. But it is beyond our scope. The school, like at the school, the states has they send out the mandate to them, mm -hmm. and they have to provide the information back to them. It's not in our right. But, but I'm not just referring to a school. I'm talking about places like out the end of Magdalena. So someone has a, I, I, there's no fire hydrants out there. But a fire happens, you know, I just don't want us having a, a fire breaking out in the rural part of the district, and because we don't have adequate. You want to test the fire hydrant out there, or I didn't test our well, the fire grew and took out the neighbor's house, or whatever nonsense. That's just what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at trying to make the district do something, it's just if preventing it from spreading out of control. If, the, if it's ours, then we make sure it's inspected sure. and maintained. If it's private, it's up to that individual. It would be the same as no hydrant existing if mm -hmm. it's on private, and whoever they're providing it for on the private end of it, they have to uh, be in compliance with the authority that they're. Protecting them. Mm -hmm. The department with the department hook up to a private in a situation like that with the department not knowing the flow re required or the flow of a private hydrant, would you hook up a truck to that? Yes. If yes. it's available, yes. you would. Yeah. We would flush it, check it, look for adequate flow, and go to town. And go to town. Okay. Same mm -hmm. thing with a with the wharfhead connection on a uh, private water tank. You know. Right. It's, we pull a draft off it and, and work off that. Okay. And for that instance, any any system any is put water. in rurally. On these water tanks, code-wise, they have to have a certain connection uh, that complies with Cal Fire or a fire department, so we can hook up to their system in the event of a fire. In any rural tanks in our area, will be inspected, and they will have a proper connection with a with the dot identifier. And there's no test requirements on that. All, all you know, the thing obviously has to function. Right. But there's no annual requirement for that. We do not have any jurisdiction on residential property other than the initial. Plan exception, uh, rough life safety, and final. So that would be fire sprinklers, uh, smoke detectors, addressing you know, setbacks, things like that. It depends on, on what element of the community they're in. They might have to fully comply to 7A. They might have to partially comply to 7A. So all those are components in, in what our responsibility is. Thank you. Now, if it's a multifamily above two units, then we have more jurisdiction. We have the authority to go out there and, and check and inspect annually. Okay. Do we have any other board comment? <coughs> no, no. Again, no. Okay. Uh, with no further comment, I uh, will we'll close the public hearing on uh, ordinance 02 2019. Uh, we'll move on to staff and committee reports. 
Go ahead. San Luis Obispo County Sheriff. San Luis Obispo County Board of Supervisors. A report. Uh, San Luis Obispo County Planning and Republic Works. A report. San Miguel Advisory Council. Here we go. <laughs> so, um, last night's meeting was really interesting. John, Sean's office sent that paperwork and a couple of notes from them to go, but I would first like to address the fire department. Um, Camp Robert couldn't make it today because they had to go out to Lake Nosamano's board meeting out there. They apologize for not being here. They wanted to personally invite the San Miguel Fire Department to their annual burn, which will be the 30th and the 31st. If they have not gotten an invitation, they would like me to give you their phone number. It would be Deputy Commander Anderson at 805-238-8525 if you would like to participate in their annual burn. What was his name again? John, his name is Deputy Commander Anderson. Thank you. You said 30 and 31st, which mm -hmm. month? May? May. Okay. That's the burn day that for them. Yeah. They're going to be doing 10,000 acres, oh. approximately. Wow. And um, they said that it would be like a really good training program for the PAS or San Miguel Fire Department. Okay, on with the meeting. Last night's meeting, um, Vicki Jensen gave me that report on the fire, wildfire thing, so you guys probably should um, have copies for other people. Um, you can take the rest of those copies with you to put on your table out there for people to come in and get to so they know how, how important that is. And then um, she went to a meeting on Tuesday. She asked me to speak for her today, so that's why I'm here. Um, which was from 10 to 3 in the afternoon about the homeless program and they got a grant from the state of California $5.5 million for Paso Robles to make a 33 bed facility which is not enough beds. However, the state of California has passed a new law that states that any homeless person may not be removed, including the riverbed, even if it is rising, unless they have a bed to move them to, period, at any time. That's the new statute for the state of California. When does that go into effect? Now. April 1st? Yeah. What, did you say private property or public no, property? Only public property. Oh, okay. You cannot remove them. You can't remove them from the riverbed, even if it is rising without a bed for them to go to. So, um, in other words, we have to provide some kind of safety for them if we're going to move them out of the riverbed for their protection. I don't know how that works, but you can contact Vicki Jensen on that one. Excuse me, ma'am, we talking about San Miguel or Paso Robles? Both. The state whole of state of California. The entire state of California. Well, what, what, what happens is... This is common, though, I'm sorry. We're, we need to get through this. Okay, so then, um, also, they're asking us, Tesla Corporation wants to put a Tesla pump here for the cars, you know, to recharge charging them, station. the charging station. They're looking for a spot in San Miguel to put it. Um, that also is a contact through Vicki Jensen. Um, it would be a really good spot and they'll, they would like it to be in some place where people can go shopping and they're willing to pay for the entire program. So that would be something for a business owner. If you know anybody that's interested, Tesla will pay for that 
project. So if you want to get the word out there to somebody that owns a business, that's fine. Are they willing to develop a small <laughs> shopping area? <laughs> I wish they would. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, at the end of the day, what's the financial benefit and incentive for San Miguel exactly. to have a Exactly. For Tesla. Right. Yeah. Because they the would come here and go shopping and eatery. It, it takes an hour and a half to charge. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we We're hoping places. that because they're Tesla people, people that own a Tesla will come here and want to develop. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be like the ideal thing for us as a community to have somebody that owns a Tesla to build here. <laughs> you got my point? Mm -hmm. So that would be beneficial to have a Tesla station in San Francisco. Okay. So then, um, that's, and the Adobe, they're having a meeting for the Chamber of Commerce at the Adobe on the 7th of May at 6.30, and you guys don't forget to have a good time on Sagebrush Days on Saturday. Hey. Have a good time. You probably will be at work, but you guys enjoy. So there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just need to say one comment to that, just so everybody knows. Um, San Miguel Fire has always been a part of the annual 10,000 acre range control burn. We're a big part of uh, supporting that, being involved in it every single year. Um, there's a new command at the base that's not completely familiar with the operation out there. Uh, I was out there today with uh, Chief Nielsen, and he had gotten word that uh, they were asking why we weren't participating this year. Um, so we do participate every year. We're a big part of that program. Um, it's nothing new to us. It will be part of it this year and for the foreseeing future. Perfect. Thank I you. just wanted to make sure that you guys oh, know. We're comment. very well aware. Yes. Well, they wanted to invite you personally, but they couldn't be here, so that's why I was asking. Thank you very much. Could, could I make just one comment? It's public comment yes. on her. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, so, so. in fact, you to her. It's <laughs> Can I make a comment to you? Sure. Okay, um, you, you're talking about the homeless, and you're talking about San Miguel, right? This whole state. In the, the river. entire state of okay, California. Okay, in, in the river. So, does that mean that San Miguel has to supply beds? No. Or can we just leave them in the river and <laughs> whatever happens? I guess what I'm saying is, you know, because Pastor Robles just... It's like, none of our business what the homeless people do on public, on public property anymore. That's what they're telling okay, us. Okay, yeah, because I, I know in Pastor Robles, they're, they're building a 56-bed unit to the... To you can the, assist them in any way you can, but they cannot be removed <laughs> from any public facility. Unless you have beds. Unless you have a bed to take them to. Okay. Yeah, so, so you have an extra room. Yeah. Bring them on in. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, so we're, we're not responsible for them if they get drowned if, when the river's coming up, right? That's nothing, that has nothing to do with it. They okay. cannot be removed okay. without yeah. a bed for them to go to. <coughs> oh, okay, well then. That has nothing to do with it. If they're drowning, these guys have to go save them. But what I'm saying to you is they cannot be removed from that property even if the water is rising. Yeah, okay, well that's what I thought. Because like I said, I know they're in Pass Road, but they're building a homeless shelter for, I don't know, 50 cents a quarter. And it's over a million. So, so anyway, we're not going to be required to build a shelter with beds, right? No, but you guys can go over there and check out the money that's being allocated for it if you want it. Uh, no, I didn't. We're going to move, move on. Uh, <laughs> we have a report from Camp Roberts. How much money is being No. No, that was a report from yes. Camp Roberts. <laughs> I know it's here. So, we have the district staffing committee report. What was the funding? I'm the general manager. Million. Just okay, a couple things. Uh, 100 personnel. Um, I've notified uh, SEMA, the San Miguel Employees Association, and advised them that they are now recognized as a bargaining unit group. And a day will be set in early May, as soon as the president returns from his uh, hiatus for two weeks. Um, and we will be able to start uh, the negotiation process. 
Uh, second, our utility worker, Matt Stiles, has passed his distribution one test and has received his certification within the first seven months of uh, his appointment with the district. So I'd like to say good job to Matt. Yeah. yeah. Um, so under financials, uh, the account reconciliations are complete. The cash transfers to capital reserve and, and operational reserves are currently being completed and will be done for the fiscal me financial meeting on May 2nd. And the budget is in the process now um, that the reconciliations are complete. Adjustments are being made uh, to the draft budget um, and a preliminary budget will be submitted at the May 2nd meeting. Um, for review is scheduled to be on the May 23rd regular board meeting agenda for approval. So this will be one of the first times that we actually presented a budget before July 1st. Um, and uh, yeah, end of June, before July 1st, we'll actually go into the fiscal year with a budget. Um, um, we're going to also do an authorized release for a request on a proposal and RFP uh, that will be in here for seeking contract services for future uh, audit services. You guys will have that coming up. We'll be seeking to extend our contract um, to the end of the life of our current investments um, with our current investor uh, that we work with. Uh, that'll be coming to the board at the main regular meeting also. And that should be coming to each year uh, when we pass the budget, the investment policy um, uh, will be looked at and we'll just be looking at extending that uh, for the life of the investments that we have there. Uh, under utility, uh, we'll be discussing the status of the Machado Wastewater Treatment Facility expansion. Um, uh, that'll be on there tonight. Also, uh, as we already heard from the District Water Code is on the agenda for a second reading and for approval. Uh, we'll be discussing district facility uh, options regarding office space and the administrative offices for the San Jose CSD. This may require a special meeting in the future to explore options in more detail. Uh, so we'll be discussing that tonight. Under fire, um, review and discuss approval, uh, uh, declaring hazardous weeds uh, a public nuisance within the district. We have our first list of review of the district. Uh, the district's been completely reviewed, so uh, you'll be looking at the addresses that the letters will be going out to notify and cut their weeds. A uh, fairly large number this year because we had a lot of help from Mother Nature 